What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for December 3rd, 2022. Tough loss for the Upper Dublin Cardinals yesterday. They got behind 21-0. They did battle back valiantly. It was uh, The final score was 21-14. They actually had a chance at the end, driving to, to win the game. But, I mean, Emotep's a good team. They've been historically good since they came into existence in the PIAA. Um, forget when, but they've won a couple state championships, I think, over the years and, and have been to a few. So definitely a good, good team. Not Nothing to hang your head about, but I, I love high school football. So looking forward to being able to go to some of the games next year with the kids. But we're on to high school basketball. I don't, I don't know much right now about the Upper Dublin basketball team, but I will get on that, and we, we shall see what happens. But Sixers dropped another one, their second straight, 117-109 to Memphis. They're a good team. Um, I just they, they looked out of sync and out of sorts. I, I don't know if it's because they're, they're undermanned, if it's Doc or what. So hopefully next week once – Harden comes back, we start seeing something that resembles more of a set offense that, that makes sense. But till then, we will just plow through it. I mean, there's nothing else you can do. Hopefully, like I said, they can they can get it together. We have the Flyers Devil tonight. My Owls take on VCU this afternoon. It's raining. Michigan versus Purdue tonight for the Big Ten Championship. So it's going to be a good, like I said earlier in the week, it's going to be a very busy and good sports weekend. You had uh, USC Utah last night where USC got blown out uh, late in that game. So, and, and it was funny because everybody was up and coming on USC, but Utah was the, was the pick and they were a top five team, I think, beginning of the year. So shouldn't come as a surprise. I know a lot of people were betting USC to win, but... It shouldn't be a surprise because Utah was, they were a top five team, like I said, at the beginning of the year. So uh, looking forward to some of the games today. I really think the, the AAC game, I'm probably biased because of Temple playing in there, but I'm looking forward to that game probably more so than any of the other games. I think we're going to see a lot of blowouts and just ugly games, but I think that AAC game and I think the ACC game is also going to be good. So good college football day for for championship Saturday. But today we're going back to 1950 and the defending champion Philadelphia Eagles, they played the Cleveland Browns out in Cleveland and lost 13 to 7. And usually when a score is 13 to 7, it's an ugly, disgusting game. And yes, as this score suggests, this was just a, a brutal and disgusting game. Uh, Warren Lahr returned an interception for the Browns for their only score. Running back Jim Palmer scored the only touchdown for the Eagles. And then the Browns added two field goals. Listen to these stats. The Eagles had 167 total yards, but they had four turnovers. Even more crazy is the Browns only had 68 total yards and one first down. Now, why am I talking about a random game in 1950? Well, this was the last NFL game in which the team that won had no pass attempts. The Browns did not attempt a pass at all in that game and came away with the 13-7 win. And I, I don't know if I, I did look and... There hasn't been met, like at least two, three pass attempts in most games since then. I haven't looked, and I think that was total, but I, I don't know if it was just winning or losing teams. But this is attempts, not completions, attempts. They did not attempt to pass. And I, I read into this, and the backstory is kind of funny. And in the week one, the Browns went to Philadelphia and beat the Eagles 35-10. to 10. And Otto Graham, the Browns quarterback, just was passing all over the field. He threw for 346 yards. And a guy we talked about on this podcast, Greasy Neal, the, the Eagles head coach, basically was bitching in the media <clears throat> about Paul Brown, who was the, the Browns coach, and said, oh, he was passing too much. But I, it almost got the sense that he was accusing him of running up the score um, on the Eagles because I guess he just kept passing and passing and passing. I uh, said he could be a good basketball coach because he likes to put the ball in the air or something. Some 1950 burn that 
was like, okay, whatever, that's stupid. But back then, it probably was a burn. So Paul Brown got pissed off and said, all right, Greasy, F you. Here's what I'm going to do. And literally did not run the or pass the ball the entire game and still came out with a win. So the closest we've come to anything resembling that within the past, I would say, 40 to 50 years was last year the Bills and the Patriots played, and I forget whether that game was in New... I think it was in New England. Um, and it was just super, super windy. And it was basically impossible to pass. And Mac, uh, Mac Jones attempted three pass attempts. And there was a couple games in the 70s where there was three or four pass attempts. And I think the Bills were involved in one when they had O.J. Simpson. But... For the most part, this does not happen. So 1950, this day in Philly sports history, the Eagles lost to the Browns, who did not attempt a pass 13-7. to um, And it basically was Paul Brown being like, okay, you want, you want to see I, I beat you with the pass? Now I'm going to beat you with the run. So kind of one of those interesting little tidbits. But like I said, go have yourselves a Saturday. We have some games all day today, so enjoy. Big Eagles games tomorrow We'll where we'll preview and give you our pick. Hopefully we can get back to 500 with that. But go enjoy your Saturday. Stay dry. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.